Red Bull gives you wings. Well, honestly, going into the second map, GSG heard that I said that Exit was super strong and they decided to double that and give it right back to them as <laughs> what a performance coming out of them over on Vine Vans. I mean, just how they were shooting, just everything. It was just so clean. Like they looked like they fully woke up and were ready for this. Yeah, as we mentioned on the desk before we started this matchup is you could be as prepared as you want against a team like DSG, but sometimes you just gotta land your shots. And I think one of those players just really stepped up to the plate from that first map on Pearl into this one. It's definitely uh, unstable. When you're looking through uh, their performances of what DSG was able to do on the attack, I mean, the whole comp that they had, uh, let's 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 actually talk about that too. They came out with a brand new comp that maybe Exit wasn't ready yet uh, to play against because I have not really seen a chamber and a harbor in a composition. So props <laughs> to Chris Young as the uh, or Chris Young's rather as the coach to see what they've been cooking up in the lab here to prepare for this second map in. You know, Mark, I was, for me, I was like, oh, uh, we'll have to see how the harbor is going to be played on defense because yeah. you don't have a Viper and then, and never happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't have so a chance to see any defense. <laughs> that was kind of like, that was literally our, our thought right after the death segment ended. We were like, okay, this should, in theory, be a pretty good attacking side. You have a lot of utility. You can use the harbor utility to get on site. And then the brim, old, uh, brim utility just basically keeps you at bay after the fact. You can still use some of that harbor util as well, but it certainly makes things a lot easier. Here. you have so much versatility with this composition on the attacking side mm -hmm. the defense was kind of a question mark how well was it going to work and yeah we didn't really get to see a whole lot of that because <laughs> of the fact that dsg did so incredibly well on the attacking side and yep. we talked about it going into map one if you're going to be an underdog sometimes the best thing you can do is do the unexpected so they come yep. in with a composition change they already had a weird comp if you remember coming into that game their composition was far from standard. Raise Yuru, Sky, Viper, Brim. Instead, they kind of mix things up a little bit. They juggle some rolls around, and they end up with the composition you see here in front of you. And it works out very nicely for them on the attacking side. I would have loved to see the defense a little bit more, just so I could get an understanding of what we could potentially see with this team. Yeah, uh, if not anything on the attack, it's off not only, you know, the, the scaling opportunities and the sca scaling capabilities of a Harbor and a Sky in your com to activate a raise, but unstable again, I think went like, what, seven and two uh, overall in first bloods, uh, first kills and first deaths. So definitely did a great job of entering on sites. Even when you're looking at the little gimmicks that they were doing on pistol rounds of using a cove to get into the site as well, yeah. flash through that so that they can't really get shot through uh, the, the cove when, you know, you don't have too much utility to work with on defense or at the, uh, during the pistol rounds. I just think it was great ways for, and a great plan that was built here by DSG just to really get as many rounds as it could on the attack and yeah we didn't see too much harbor uh, too much harbor on defense also because they had a nice thrifty that they won on that second map against uh exit where you would think it would not, you would have been the case because when we saw exit win pistols on that first map it scaled on to like winning bonus rounds and then going back and continuing to to pretty much snowball the effect of all the rounds that were picking up and it's very hard to to play against and i'm glad that and i'm happy to see at least for dsg they turn that page forget about that first map own the second one now we get to see a third and I'm so excited for that. I was hoping that we'd get to see a little bit more of DSG and Exit today. I wasn't quite ready to no, send one of them into the lower bracket. So now we get to see them over on Split as the great decider here. This time it's gonna be DSG starting off on the defense. And in the past two, looking at this team, they like to go for that double duelist. And I'm kind of curious if they'll change things up. They maybe can to keep them stable on that raise here, Bob, because it was so good last map. Like, you can remain Van Silly, but I'm going to be frank here. I didn't think we were going to get a third map. I thought coming into this series, I was like, Exet is just too buttoned up mm. to take it to map three. And Disguise really showed up in map two. And I think that that is a tremendous amount of momentum carrying them now into map three. Split not exactly the greatest map for them. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely one that has proved to be a little bit difficult for them throughout the, this Game Changers series too. But again, 
Unexpected. They already made a change on a map they were actually okay on in the past. It wasn't the best map either, but it wasn't exactly the worst map for them. It was a map that we've seen them play, and they did find a win here in Game Changers. So obviously, DSG has the willingness to adapt, and we've already talked about that, Vans. They have yeah. somewhat chaotic agent pools. You never really know what you're going to get. So mm -hmm. I kind of think that that is the, the win con for them. It's just come into this game completely different than the last time you played the map. Yeah, and but you have to look at it this way too. There's there we came out with a new comp today for Bind. We had a couple of days to prep up for this day, True. right? Two or three days just for this game. But you only have those that many days. Can you really try to bring out a new composition to every single map in that map? Well, probably not. Which is why looking at split, maybe not. Maybe, maybe. I'm just saying maybe. Are you sure about I, that? I, I think so. <laughs> well, to be honest, I think that's where we're going to see some good old honest Valorant. On on one end for DSG, they like to play that double duelist, a little bit more of a dive composition. While for Exit's end, they like to play double controller. And there's no bad way of playing those compositions. It still works on both ends. So it really comes down to working that map, working those rotations, trying to find opportunities on aggression with the double duelists on the defense too to play against the lurk potentials of that i think it was an astra and a viper being played by xset we'll have to see because if there's any team that would switch things up going into a map i feel like it would be disguised but they're actually just going to stick with the double duelist the, the good I think old honest valorant the good old honest Valorant <laughs> duelist combo here of the Rays and the Jet, as much as you hate the word, the, the meta picks here. <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is, right? The, the Vans kind of nailed it. You only have so much time. You're not going to change all of your comps overnight. The only thing that I think they had going for them was the fact that they had played so many different compositions leading up to this point that maybe it was like, who knows if we've even actually seen their comp, right? Like maybe they were just kind of like, let's see what happens with this one. Oh, that kind of worked. <laughs> let's see what happens with this one. That kind of worked better. Um, it's still obviously very winnable here for Disguise. They come in with a ton of momentum. It's obviously a great map for Xset. We saw them play it and they did have a pretty easy win in the map. So it's not exactly going to be a walk in the park, but momentum is huge. Uh, you look at a map, especially a map like Split, you get off on the good foot, and it's very difficult for the other team to get back into the game. And I think Disguise has what it takes to ride the momentum from the previous map into this one. Yeah, it might not be a walk in the park, but it's definitely something within the realm of possibility based on what we got to see before. But we know the strength Exit has. It's time to see in this map three, which team is going to be knocking the other down into the lower bracket. And it's time to head over to our casters, Mimi and Wyatt. Thank you, Sierra. Yes, this series, Wyatt, has already delivered. We've been pushed to a map number three by DSG. And the question now is if they can complete the upset here on Split. Uh, heading in, I think it was even a question if DSG could push Exit, take a map off Exit, just given how storied and excellent those players on Exit, the stars of that team, have been since the inception of the Game Changers scene, period. Katsumi, Bob, so many titles under their belts going up against DSG, this new team with players that have never been able to compete at this high of a level on, an, on, on a legitimate organization. It's a totally new space for them and they are rising to the occasion, Lazy Lion being one of those. And they've just been absolutely lights out so far in this series. They have been excellent, but only one of these two teams can make it all the way through the upper bracket here and take map number three. Toxins and for Exet, the Sun they start on the attacking side. Didn't get to see much of their attack back on Bind, but now they get a much better opportunity here as they slow the pace far down from what we saw on Bind. So far in GC2, this split map has been excellent for the Exet side, less so for DSG. So we'll have to see in that little period of time before the qualifier and this actual playoff stage if, if DSG have made significant improvements here on the map because you have to feel going into it that this is a good place for Exet to actually take the win in the series. Prime control already taken, a first priority checked off for Exet. But how do they want to finish this one? You see the Aster player already rotating back, setting up for a possible A hit. Unstable, just jiggling, trying to get any amount of info with the peak, but not seeing anything actually rotating off. Some noise made on B, and the rotates are being drawn because of that false info off that flash as well. It just barely misses going far enough. Lazy Lion, though, ever crisp with that crosshair placement with the taps, been so good with these pistols. Left. And with limited time on the clock, Exit have rotated to try and go for a B hit. 
But they've realized it's a ruse. They've already gone back into this B site. The fake fell apart. The second Lazy Lion took down Soto. With that wall dropping on the other side, DSG not quite Consume aware it. of what's oh. waiting for them. Bunny B takes down Unstable, working their way forward on alert. But for the moment, the priority is on the site, and Exit is successful in that endeavor. Rise and Cat both finding big kills, and Misu in a bit of trouble here. Support is so far away, all the way back. He invents his lazy out. lion, but can Misu get this done? It's the two new players. It's their opportunity to get something done, and the damage well, that's been dealt onto Rise. Low HP. An exit fractured on this one. Bob is wrapped back towards remaining. main. It's a strong crossfire, but remaining. it's only Bob. One versus one. Oh, the shot onto Lazy Lion and gets it done on Misu to Bob, the veteran, claims the pistol round for exit with an excellent clutch. Leaving the clutch in always trustworthy hands of Bob. We said it before, but truly one of the best players, always contending for the best player in this North American One Game Changers running. scene. One Lazy Lion like was looking really good on that pistol already, carrying the momentum from those previous two maps into the third. And I liked how Misu was playing that as well, trying to take it slow, give time for that rotate to come in. But Exet, oh, limited time on the clock. Spot. They made a great rotation into B and set up a really nice post plant. And Exet slow things down yet again on their anti-eco here. DSG maybe trying to set up a bit of a trap play in mid. Three players there ready to punish us. There's aggression on the other side towards A as well, but all is contained for the moment. Things gonna begin slowing down here. Except playing patiently. Of course, on this anti-eco, you don't want to rush things. You don't want to give an, an inch away to a team with no economic Boxing investment whatsoever. Off. They want to finish on this one. This lurk wall that rises had up on both rounds now be really potent for these late round B hits. Just making your way in forces DSG to be really proactive with clearing behind that one. But talk of proactivity, they found some admit in the timing for Soto is great to catch these players off guard. They'll be able to calm over to their teammates as to where DSG is pushing and in success with that one. And Stable will claim a shot against this B site execute, but the spikes already planted. And with Soto on the prowl in mid, there shouldn't be an opportunity. For DSG to get anything done here. This player taken down, unstable, suspected as well. It's a clean 4K for Soto. Soto, that new addition to Exet as well. The team that was already competing this year in, in Game Changers 1 made one roster move, which is Soto playing on their first serious organization as well. A giant opportunity for them, one they haven't had previously in the scene, starting off nicely here. And playing for a team that, frankly, Exet going into this, I think their expectation has to be that they're going to win. They're a team with the experience, not just individually, but as a whole, they've been playing together. They've been competing in a lot of tournaments together, just in the general Valorant circuit. This is the kind of match that they're certainly favored in, and DSG are really pushing them for an upset. Funny B, sending things up a ramp initially, trying to continue to claim that position that Exet has had success with thus far, and is taken down by DSG. So where do Exet react? Set up towards B, they've already contacted forward off of this wall, and with the smokes blooming, Yes, she is unaware of where these players are. What time did they take? In the backside, disaster is alone. How much can Mitsu get done? Only one. Still to an advantage towards DSG, and it's a well placed nade to force Katsumi back around this pillar. Straight, maybe, in the hands of Katarina, who's already found her way into the site with support up above from the second duelist on this squad. An exit not spike even getting down, an opportunity. Beat. The spike clatters to the ground as Katsumi falls One and slowly remaining. forward goes DSG as this round Done. can be cleaned up nicely with Katarina on for two. DSG doing what they couldn't on that first map, avoiding what caused that disastrous loss on Pearl, their own map pick. The bonus rounds, they're finally able to convert against one for the first time. A big one for them to pick up, one and great remains. sight anchoring here to be able to get one, but really it did come down to this late round retake, which is well coordinated out of DSG. These double duelist comps really focused on the fundamentals, and for a new team, DSG has looked excellent in that regard thus far. It looks like DSG might try to fight over that A orb so Lazy Lion can get her ultimate online into this crucial first buy round. At least I'd love to see that, and it looks like they are kind of encroaching towards there. No, they are going to back off and opt to play passively on that side of the map. Because in the meantime, it's Exet fighting for that B main control. Pretty standard setup here, just leaving Soto to 
pressure a bit with those cages. Try and get some information on A. Hold back those defenders. The hallmark of the first two maps for DSG seem to be their priority of fighting forward for control of these alt -arps. Haven't seen them just yet, and it's been a much more passive defensive side, but that likely dictated by the slow pace that Exit has been setting thus far. Hannah just trying to peek for a bit of info. Clock winding down, 50 seconds left, and this is where Exit are going to opt to make a, a big mid-round rotation all the way from B main to A main, where Soto is just kept that sort of passive control at the very least making it aware that there are no uh, DSG players pushing up too aggressively so they can just opt to walk up here. Unstable is holding that angle from Catwalk though. Can she actually find the first seconds pick? Left. He's alone on this site though. And spotted out is the execute from Exit. DSG are going to have to play retake in this one. Double Satchel already in for Bunnybee and the spike soon to be planted. No one going to try and make that play to deny earlier from DSG. It looks like we're heading to just a big five on five retake at this point. But look at this lurk from Katsumi. This could be the linchpin to Exet's rifle round win here. The DSG player is ready to pull out of screens, fight backside, but Bob on the crossfire. Swings goes one for one to Katarina with a really crucial kill onto the second. And now it's Rise reswinging from backside. These trades are really nice from Exet. They're going to come all the way through, all the way to fruition. That Katsumi flank, it comes in late, but it cleans up the round. Nice work from Exet. DSG just wanted to fast flood all from that defender side at spawn, but Exet are ready for it. You see Bob setting up a flash to re-engage after their opponent Let's sends the initial piece of utility reality. and everyone swings together there to shut things down. Critical round for Exet. Disguise though still able to make a reasonable buy here. Lazy Lion going down is going to provide that final orb to get that ultimate. The Seekers online. Katarina and Misu as well really close to their alt similar to Rise and Bob. Orbs could be very valuable on this round. We'll see how much fighting there actually is for them. It doesn't look like much right now. Nothing much being put a, uh, a priority towards mid from the side of Exet. It's almost always been these slow rounds into extremity control. So I'm wondering if we'll see more moments from DSG, like on that second round, where they're trying to push and prod in mid during that mid round to try and punish the lack of control from Exet. What I'm curious about with this half, too, is the defense, at least based on Pearl, was not that great for DSG. That seemed to be the weak point of this team. How many rounds is it going to take for them, though, on defense, even if they're, you know, whether they're down or up, to actually get the win out on attack? That's the side that they've been excellent on. You'd have to hope, though, on split with how difficult it can be to attack that they're going to be able to string something together despite going down early. It is that double duelist comp will always favor the attacking side just a bit, but there are plenty of opportunities, particularly playing those retakes Blinded. where you can thrive on the defensive side. Axa continuing with this slow pace. They've applied pressure towards this B site. We'll pop left. Seekers. This is another shot at a fake. We'll see if it actually pans out. There's only 20 seconds left or so, and they have to get the spike all the way through A main to the site. Hannah is peeking over on A. Well, there is just oh, madness on this B site. The crucial kill, though, is Hannah going down on A in the screens. She was the one that could have actually shut this whole thing Hannah down. Spike Plant is going to come in on time. And now it's just Lazy Lion and Unstable on the 2v3. These players have looked insane up until this point. Lazy Lion, once again, I mean, she's just down to do it all herself. The talent from this player is unbelievable. The plays that we've seen on all three maps so far, making that 2v3 look like it's absolutely nothing. Just another day of Valorant for her. Great work, too, to recognize the possibility of Bob being so far away. Bob was spotted on that initial execute, and it was great work from Bunnyby to try and sell this fake. I mean, we were overwhelmed from the chaos watching it here. DSG surely felt that as well, but they got the information in the moment that mattered, and Lazy Lion, they realized the opportunity to make the play backside and find the perfect timing to make it work. So, two, two, three, and Exet might be looking to turn up the pace here. Four players stacked towards the B site, but again, they're patient to begin with, tempting DSG with this double duelist combo yeah. to make a mistake, to get too aggressive. Blinded. DSG, yeah. though, are so content playing this defensive side passively at this point. They really haven't fought for B main control at all. They've been happy to give it up to Exit. At the moment, they're content playing around this Viper wall, though. They're trying to play in front of it, actually stay on the line of sight. So if a Lurker does come through, if an entry does come through, they want to be able to fight. 
That dog is going to go all the way through, get some of the information, but the rest of this XF team still kept at bay. Reposition for Unstable back into the close corner. Exet has made so much noise, shown so much presence, but DSG have not re-prodded in a main. They've been conditioned by this slow pace. And actually an attempt there from Rise to try and flood out from main with the help of a Viper Zolt. But was it even the idea or was it a fake all along? They're trying to double back fast towards this A site, but in mid, another player falls from Katarina's Judge. Exet maybe overcooking this one a bit, and now everything lies on this late round execute left. into A. And look who's here, Hannah. Ready to stall, or Molly's everything she needs to hold on to this one, but Bunny Bee's in with the rocket and makes it past the utility to grab the site. So three versus there. four, a post plant ready, but Katarina might just make a play. Rocket, nade, a double sack, she'll, she'll come in, not in time to deny the plant, but in time to grab Bunny B. 10 HP is all she has to try and close this one out as Bob will attempt to make a play back towards screen. Splash good, but spam better, and it's Cat alone. 8 HP, Misu spots her out, and there's no chance chance. DSG are not going to fall for that fake again. They left two players on that site. Bunny B looked like they might have been able to open it up. I mean, they did open it up, but, you know, to the extent that they could be in a round winning position, the players opted to go for these aggressive lines to even things in that 3v4. But really, this first pick from Unstable is the domino that cascaded into this XF round loss. Yeah, that pit, maybe just a little bit misguided. I wouldn't hate to see Exet change the pace up here. Every single round thus far has been these really slow defaults, and DSG has their number. They haven't fallen for a single one of these fakes. DSG now in a, with an opportunity to take the lead for the first time here on this map. All of the players from Exet stacked up with these sheriffs. Sheriffs for every single player in B-Main going to be looking for some headshots. Up, little dog through. Misu has to respect that one and give a bit of space on this B side. Again, it's just a contact play. Forward off of this Viper wall. When will they drop it? Misu could be in so much trouble. Two players facing and not a single one picked up. Down goes the Astra. And it again has to be this retake for DSG. Katarina's going to try and buy time. The nade, a Roomba, all looking to be sent in. The rotations are going to take another moment more. Katarina. First kill though, that's just a spam towards hell onto Bunny B. And his dog works its way through the spawn. The jet's ready to get involved. Unstable spots someone on the dash. Forward rise still finds a kill, but Lazy Lion is there to trade quickly. Two players stacked up on the pillar. The Molly dealing so much damage. And the flash excellent as Katarina pinches around the corner with her team and cleanly retakes for a fourth round and the first lead in the map for DSG. The confidence is just still oozing from DSG. You have to commend the mental resilience of going down in pretty tragic fashion on Pearl, their own map pick, and running it back all the way like this. Starting down on this map as well, of course it was just the pistol and that one first uh, rifle round, but since then they've just been on a heater again. You can just see from the way that they're playing, the way that Katarina is moving around the map, the spam, the satchels, the the just lack of fear from these players a duelist and igl what she's done with this team it can't be understated how incredible it is mimi and the other players on this squad have just been so consistently excellent lazy lion in particular we're always going to talk about unstable because the value they're providing on the duelist but lazy lion has really been so consistent on this sky great util usage to support their duelists and also consistent performance in these retakes both on this map and back on bind as well on that attacking side working with that composition that dsg had cooked up with the harbor this exit core katsumi bob we know that they can go on the lower bracket heater they've done it plenty of times before but that being said, they don't want to go down to the lower bracket in the first round against a team that you have to feel they were favored against. They absolutely were favored. And for Xset, this round is going to be a big one for determining the course of their attacking side. DSG, not changing too much in the setup, just really making adjustments on who's anchoring where on this B site. Katarina finds this off angle ahead of the Viper wall. Really like the idea here to try and punish these contact plays that Exet has consistently gone for. Exet gonna open things up pretty slowly here. This position may, well, may not actually bear any fruit as Katarina forced to drop with that 
errant flash soaring by and inadvertently catching her straight in the eyes. Hannah now just watching from mid, playing off that orb. Off up for Unstable. The first one of the match. Tempted to go for a play here through the smoke, but no one to support and no reason to take the risk. Said with the dash fading, we'll just back away to hold towards heaven, except for the first time taking some space in mid. We've seen Unstable be very talented with this operator in previous games already in Game Changers 2, notably against evil geniuses. But Exet, here they are. It looks like they maybe are going through a little bit of indecision. It almost felt like they wanted to rotate for that similar B day hit they were doing earlier, but now they're going back to B with 35 on the clock. 35 seconds. Limited time to make this one work. Through mid, comes alert. Left. It's the raising French invents, but that means there's less resources to actually commit to this execute, and time might again get the better of them. They still don't know about this operator. They're still not ready for Unstable, who will find a clean shot onto Katsumi, and Katarina's in backside. Look at the time! 15 seconds, none of this util was pulled out. Sure, the round's slow, but the util's not getting expended Ten still. Left. The plant will make it down. And exit get themselves into a post, but here comes the flood. Seekers up off, enhanced and unstable, and missing out on a critical shot there means the DSG could be in trouble. Exit, a good position into this post plant. One on the pillar, one back site. Soto goes for a swing, and Lazy Lion is able to shut it down. Flash forward for unstable, but another whiff still. Lazy Lion alive. It's a one versus two for Rise. She's found the first, but Hannah is sticking this one, holding things to half. And Rise has made so much noise. Hannah, though, is she prepared for the rap? She's taking her time on the swing and Another finds line. the kill. DSG, a fifth round and another retake. I oh, love how Ryze up. tried to play that, baiting with the footsteps and then slowing down, but Hannah too ready for that swing across back pillar. And things really fell apart though, Mimi. Just past that mid round, when Exa showed those signs of indecision, running back to spawn and then running back to B, it totally threw off the timing of Ryze's Viper utility. So the wall dropped at the time they tried to hit the site, and then they had to wait for it to come back up with limited time. That almost ruined the round completely. They did almost salvage it, but DSG with those ults in the post plant uh, paid dividends. This default, though, for Exit, every round, it is so incredibly slow. And I just don't feel like they're leaving themselves enough options in the late rounds. Think of what DSG had to stall by the time that Execute came through. They still had a raise nade. They still had an op that was never spotted. They still had almost all of their Viper utility available. It's just really hard to make an informed decision when you're not able to pull out that util in the mid round and can lead to executes like that, where the rounds just kind of flipped on this one Execute. Except for the first time, look to be exploring mid though. It's been an area of the map that hasn't seen much presence from either team, really just being watched passively by a solo DSG player for the overwhelming amount of these rounds. We're I'm gonna going see to Katarina give us a second you attempt at this it. cheeky position up top. Master Wall committed. Oh, and a great nade there for Katarina, just barely catches Soto. While trying to scale through the smoke there, but it is traded one for one as Unstable is taken down towards heaven. So a fast change of pace here for Exet. They pivot back towards the A site, but Lazy Lion perfectly timed gets ahead of the Astro. Well, finds a kill there. Seconds left. On on site though, alone in this one. Lazy Lion across will support, and it might not even be that isolated in the end for DSG. Exet are fractured here. Both players slowly walking out on site. One till up top towards heaven. Where can they find an opening? There's only 10 seconds. There's not many opportunities left. The spike on the floor. Lazy Lion just needs to live. Time of the essence here. And Isu's there in time to shut it down. DSG, six to three up. These DSG individuals show not a shred of unease with their decision making when they want to go for a play. This peak from Lazy Lion and the quick escape it's signs like that that they really are just playing with a, a confidence and a flow that we're not seeing from Exet right now. We're not seeing Exet go for those confidence peaks. They're playing so slowly, which has its own merit. But when you're going up against an opponent with that level of confidence, you kind of need to match it yourself. Enemy kill. A bunny bee's just caught completely off guard by Unstable in that round. A little bit of a weird circumstance there, but already this round looking difficult for Exet. Flash through for Lazy Lion, just trying to apply some pressure as this retake is already in a good place with the player advantage and a fast reclear going towards ramp. 
five on four retake now for DSG. Potential wall in play for Misu. That big world. Astro Wall. The pit is going to go down. This is a major round in terms of the ultimates. We're going to see if DSG can actually make this happen as they sort of walk in slowly, creep from A. Bit of a contact Page retake, three. unorthodox. Not something you see all the time. Soto backside. That flash, so nice from Lazy Seekers. Lion. Who else? The Seekers are going to go online. A great counter to the pit. It's going to force Rise to try and peek out in tandem with that rocket from Katarina to send Katsumi to the grave. Another excellent retake from DSG. They just look so sublime right now, Mimi. Why? It's just Lazy Lion. Again, in all of these late rounds, finding so much value for their team. That first kill, wrapping around, baiting their teammate for a second to get the kill on the player backside, earns kill. the Seekers, which then wins the round versus this Viper's Pit. What a huge round out of them. And it's another retake for DSG. They've now won, I believe, six rounds in a row. The majority of those have been in these retakes. I just love what DSG are doing with their ultimates throughout this entire series. They've gotten such massive value time and time again. Unstable now picking up the operator. Surely gonna go for this fast peak. There is a firing squad awaiting her if she rounds that corner. Gonna take advantage of the cage to get a bit of a wide swing perhaps. Dash active. Bunny B completely unsuspecting. And now the swing coming from Hannah, her teammate, getting aggressive again with the shorty. I mean, you oh have God. to be joking. You have to be joking. 300 credits, not enough of a nerf. It's uh, nothing has changed. The shorty is still unbelievable, and it feels like deja vu of the last round where X set scale fast into A main, and a player is just not prepared. That close left corner not checked. Uh, this X set looks so fractured on this attacking side compared to what we are used to seeing from them. And on the other hand, DSG, a team that's been around for what a month with three players who have never been on this high caliber team for a, an org of this size, turning things around completely for just disguised Valor project, the org's Valor project this year. They look immaculate. The work that they've done as a team, as individuals, just even from when we saw them in the qualifier, the level they're on right now is just outrageous. Remember, three of these players, brand new to this level of competition and just performing at it incredibly. Unstable, a huge round out of them. Four kills to be picked up, Lazy Lion before it. Every moment DSG needs a round, one of their players goes nuclear. And for Exit, they've already invested one tactical timeout this half. They won't invest another. Instead, after losing seven rounds in a row to a team a month old, they're going into another. It could be 9-3, it could be travesty for Exet, because Unstable is just tearing them down. Bob falls early, and it's three rounds in a row now, with an almost instantaneous opening pick, and Unstable might just get more in mid. Katsumi's head is showing that it's ripped off. How is Unstable still alive? Bunny B will try and satchel, and it's actually a shot hit. Sure, Bunny B gets the kill, but she got the tag. Unstable, through all of that, hits the raise in the air, and then she dies of fall damage. It, it's ridiculous. You have to be joking me. <laughs> I mean, every single thing is just going in the favor of DSG. Unstable, lethal with the operator. The fall damage is just the cherry on top. That is absolutely absurd. We have gone down to a two on two though. This is Xset's first legitimate chance at getting a round win in what feels like ages. Lazy Lion though. Right spot. Will it be the right timing? Not quite. I know Rise exactly catches him looking away. And now it's only Hannah left, and she's been revealed. Cypher ultimate used, and left. it'll be a mad dash towards this B site. Hannah worried that it could be a double back, some kind of fake out from her opposition on exit. And after faking a bit of noise, running Five up planted. the stairs, she'll take her time and walk all the way back around towards the spawn side. Exit, a crossfire here. And Soto only has a knife out, so despite seeing Hannah for the first time, doesn't manage to get a shot off of it. Knife out again for Soto, and Hannah just swings around the corner and claims to. What, what just happened there? For I Exet. think that's a rare moment where you're seeing the nerf to the rifles come into play. That The only explanation is that Soto had no ammunition left and was trying to fully distract for the swing. That, that must has have been be it. Only explanation. That is just a less ammo new rifle nerf moment.
regardless, though, an incredible round for DSG. I mean, the work that Unstable put in into the one versus two for Hannah. We haven't talked a lot about Hannah this game, but probably the most experienced member on this DSG team. A stint with Chen Ji way back at the beginning of Valorant, and a beautiful Red Bull clutch for her in this one to continue through with this new generation of players. And maybe a tech pause is the answer to what happened at the end of that one. We're going to figure that one out here as we do get ready for that second half. Yeah, perhaps. We'll, we'll have to see. That was quite strange. It's not often, though, that you see an initiator in the GC scene go up toe-to-toe -to -toe and even surpass the likes of Bob, and surely not from an upcoming player, someone that you don't typically see in these high-pressure playoff situations, but Lazy Lion, the sky, the initiator for DSG, has more than rose to the occasion looking absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, this DSG team, they're legit. I think people people doubted seeing some of the unknown names on this roster come up, be given that opportunity or given a renewed opportunity, but thus far they have not disappointed. For Exit, though, as we do get back into the game here, this pistol round will be massive. They are down nine to three on map number three. And if you lose this one, that would be the top three finishing squad from GC1 going to the lower bracket off the rip. DSG on the precipice of what really is a monumental upset. You just don't see the names Katsumi and Bob and associate that with a first round loss headed to the lower bracket. Katarina unstable with that fast play taking map control up A ramp. Already into heaven and ready to split deep onto this site. They'll dive through as their teammates come out from the spawn side except fully forced to give this one away. So a 5v5 retake. You see how DSG want to set up for this. They're keeping control of A. You can see Bob is pretty far away. How are Exit going to actually regroup and try and make this retake happen? They need this desperately to get back into the game. A pistol round loss here could seal the deal. It could seal the upset for DSG. DSG, they have a great post plant set up here. The Astro already back containing that flank and two players ready to crossfire in main. Unstable will get tagged by the dog, but it's instead a push out from heaven. Katsumi, critical first kill on the Katarina, but a flash through for Hannah. She set up to perfection to shut down these players. Flooding from heaven, three kills to Hannah, and a complete shutdown of the waterfall on the side of DSG. DSG perfectly swinging through the walls off that flash from Lazy Lion. Again, the decision making, the little moments of team play are so, so clean, so efficient for a team of this age. You just don't expect a team that's been around for a month to have this level of synergy, but they've got it. Round 14 here, X set, just the classics. One sheriff invested for Bob. Really nothing to write home about in this round. And it might just be DSG paving their path to 11. A ramp co uh, control, excuse me, taken once again. Katarina and Unstable, these fearless entering double duelists that we've seen time and time again make great openings for DSG. Not exactly happening this time. These Xset players buried into the site. We're actually getting effective swings with these classics and that single share, bringing it to the two on two. Katsumi still, though, just that classic, gonna perhaps be able to uh, uh, recover some kind of gun to make this doable. Timing on that Viper wall used to cross into the site for both members of Xset. Misu made a step there. Rise should have heard that. So Xset realizes this is still a play towards the A site. Orb goes up towards the spawn side. They have to fully clear out this site. Better weapons. That time pressure is applied. Tap on the spike. Close corner. Misu one versus one. No bullets. Has to come down to the ghost and around the corner. It's Rise on the other side. It's a clean shot, though, from Misu. Another step up from another new player for DSG to grab their 11. The disguise round wins. The clutch wins are just inexorable. It feels like they can never lose in any single situation on these last two maps. Across the board, there is just everything right with this team. There is not one flaw in their play on bind nor split. 11, two, three. If they could win this bonus round, they might just be repeating history. Remember, it was a 13-11 victory to push this series the distance. And they might just be closing out here. Reinvestment made. The Katarina already taken down, looking for fast control towards ramp. 
So DSG have to look for other options towards this B site, but it's fast. Already dashing out into Soto's utility. Got a cam tag there and a shot as well onto Unstable. Everyone else still stalled out behind Viper Mollies. It's the first real positive turn for Xset. If there were any time for it to begin, it certainly would be on this anti-bonus round. They've done a nice job so far stymieing that hit, and as things are going to slow down, it's disguised with weak weaponry going up against an array of vandals. Xset need to close this one out in clean fashion. If they have any hope of beginning some kind of comeback, what would be a, a, a miracle comeback. Five versus three here. And Xset. A nice setup, everyone towards the B side. Three players actually holding for a push in spawn, which isn't yet to come. They'll have to break the tripwire in heaven, which shows that it will be this late round split back into the B site. But no players in main, this one should just be crunched on cleanly for X set, and that it will be. All three taken down, only losing Soto on the round. Their first round win, and I don't know how many rounds, but it's gotta feel good. They are back in the game, even if it is just a little bit maybe, but it's got to start somewhere. It always has to start somewhere, one round at a time. But this is going to be the first big test. DSG back with rifles in hand in that Viper's Pit to work with. The Astro Wall as well. They could just go for a big site execute, try and get in for essentially free, just get a clean scaling, uh, uh, you know, team scaling effort into the site and then use the Viper's Pit off of that to close out this 11th round. Guarantee the ROT. Astrowall committed, fast hit into this A site exit. We'll send some util through to try and Welcome stall, but there's no slow in this double doomless comp. Viper's pit put down. That'll block off actually towards the ramp. So no one will be able to retake from main. Instead, it has to either be a flood out for spawn or through heavens. If Exet want to make this one work, dog up for Bob. They'll use that to re clear and be the first point of contact on this retake. Star's still up for DSG to try and continue to stall towards the spawn site. They spotted players already pushing into elbow. And out comes Xset. Three kills. It's Katsumi leading the charge. Player but look, this standing. plant position, if they can get a player to heaven, they can shut this one down. But Misu is trapped. Pull available. And it's already halfway for Bunny Bee. Misu has no idea where the opponents could be. And Bunny Bee's just going to stick the defuse. Uh, I mean, this Astra is just completely lost in it. A clean retake round for Xset. A lovely retake from X set. The, the uh, efforts to push out of screens there as a team, as a unit, the swings off of each other. They were holding the right angles, winning the duels, helping each other. That was really nice from them. And now it's actually going to put DSG on an eco for the first time in this game, probably. And they have a chance now. This is where it can begin. You can feel those first couple dominoes maybe falling, but still a lot more will, will have to fall over for this to spiral into a close game. Eco round though. Can't count it out of the question. Sojo has switched the side that they're set up on and we'll be trying to hold against an A exec here. Both duelists ran in fast Bunny B as well. Making strides. It's actually going to be a push towards spawn as Katarina beheads Bunny B. Rides through the smoke up top there to help out Soto, who's doing well to anchor on the site. And despite the jet going and getting a little bit silly, wrapping away up through heaven and through spawn, there's nothing more to be done by her. Only Hannah left alive. And Xset going to continue to build up this comeback. A six round here, as long as they can close out against the state. We've talked about Soto quite a bit that new addition to the Xset squad. And they have a lot to prove. This is their first real time on, on a top team here in, in the Game Changers scene. Their first time competing with a bigger organization, stepping up in that round. They've stepped up in a number of rounds, but up until this point, it hasn't amounted to enough. But of course, it's not on any person's shoulders. It's really about the entire team. And you don't expect a team like Xset to be falling in the team play category to a new squad like DSG, but that really has been the case. Vipers pit up for Xset. They're going to invest this one in mid. DSG is actually looking towards that area of the map here with two players early on their next rifle round. Seekers are available, so if they want to disrespect this one and try and push in, there's a chance of that for DSG. They've already dealt good damage with that initial spam. Bob taking a bit of a peek towards B main. Viper's pit to deal with in mid. We're going to see how DSG want to work around this. Their attack sides have looked more than competent. Excellent. 
on Pearl and especially on Bind. Only needing two here to close it out. It does feel inevitable, but Xset, a good effort so far beginning this comeback. Trying to prod towards A main as well, oh just God. play a bit forward, maintain some information. Jump spot from Bunny B. Boom bot out as well. Holding this angle aggressively. Unstable. Satchel Taking up. this initial fight, Bunny B just wants to back Satchel up that satchel is so well timed, and that's the a. spike down. Perfect work from Bunny B. Can DSG recover this spike? They're gonna need some help to do so. Only the Astra and the Viper here, and only 37 seconds. You need to put some urgency in their step, especially with the Astra wall being put up just on the other side. They're gonna be locked out of this one for the moment. More reinforcements. The troops have arrived for X set, but the spike somehow actually got grabbed through all of that. Hannah just rips in and grabs it straight through the Astra wall. But do they have time to win this round still? It's 15 seconds on the execute into the A site. And already, Lazy Lion has been taken down. Ten so DSG left. make the tough decision to just save this one. Yeah, still that play from Bunny B. Just delayed enough time. It took enough time off the clock. That spike recovery ended up being entirely irrelevant to the round as it just was a massive waste of time. And of course, also just going to give away all that positioning. A bit over aggressive from Unstable, though. A player who's been excellent on those opening kills. But in that situation, perhaps a bit too ambitious, not really considering all the factors being that spike carrier. Time out here for Disguise. It's been quite a string of rounds that Exit has been able to build here. Remember, only two rounds needed for them to close this one out. And it's a young team. They have a good opportunity here to find a big upset to start their run in Game Changers. It's really not something you want to let slip through your fingers. No, absolutely not an exit. We've talked about it. They're the they're the storied team. They're the team with history. They're the team with two players on that Game Changers proverbial Mount Rushmore in NA. Katsumi and Bob, they really only win. They've won every Game Changers that they've participated in, save for GC1 this year with Exit. They're trying to reclaim their title. They were close in GC1. They fell to Shopify in that lower bracket final, ending in third place. And you know that they're hungry for a better placement than that. That's what they're used to. They're not used to finishes down in that lower bracket. They're not used to going out of tournaments early. And certainly not to an upcoming team, a team that's been around for a month. But Disguise, you would have never guessed that they've been around for a month if I didn't say that just now. They look like a team that's been playing for far longer than that. The synergy is Man. excellent. They're punching above their weight. But there's always that gap between the teams that can play close, that can pressure a top squad, and the ones who can actually finish the job. That's where the question lies on DSG. Gray's Rocket available in this round. Some great tools to try and find match point. As they will slow things down. Take a leaf out of Exet's book, as on the other side, a bit of space being taken here. Aggression in B lobby. Misu holding close on the other side, and Bob is actually walking all the way through. Misu ready for it, but Katsumi was there in time to trade back for two of her own and maintain Exet's advantage. Katsumi, the veteran, back on her old role. Getting that second kill, denying the trade, can't be understated how crucial that was, how much of an impact kill that was for the round. Soto in trouble, Unstable has found a gap past the camera and that Cypher lurking is taken down. So it goes back to a three versus three and that retake utility already invested for Exit not finding anything. Operator shots missing on Bunny B needs to find a connection here quickly. Rise around the corner, trades one for one with Hannah. It's a double set up close, it's a swing forward for Unstable and it's a cleanup for DSG. Match and serious point again against Exit. point. It felt inevitable at some point that they were going to get into a situation where just the individual prowess, their ability to put the crosshair on the enemies that has just looked beyond impressive this whole time would actually bring a round win to fruition. And it finally does happen there. Hannah, who again, it feels like we haven't mentioned enough. One of the two experienced players on this DSG side coming up when they needed it most, bringing them to match point. Exit though, they've still got a more than a competent buy. They're not out of it just yet. The Bob Operator. It's been a while since we've seen oh, its yeah. debut, and in the final oh, hour here, possibly, for Exit in the upper bracket, she'll bring it back out. Maybe just what they need to start to pull this one back over DSG. 
All they need is to get it over the line. And the tools they have in this round are good. Two ultimates available. That showstopper, really what I'm looking towards to make a difference. DSG are trying to fight for this mid control. Taking but X set, they're not going to give it up. It looks like Bob's had enough. <laughs> she is just facing directly down mid with that AWP, re-peaking on the sky. <laughs> Definitely at this point doing whatever she can to get this win quiet on this third map. Rare, but outperformed by the enemy initiator. Lazy Lion just looking like an absolute talent. One of the best upcoming players in the scene as the sighting Zach is coming into A. Rocket out from Katarina. Can she find any value? That tripwire from Soto gonna shut that down five on four. Immediately, Buddy B in with a rocket of her own going one for one. The swings are coming out from Exit. They are trying to fight this right here and right now before there's even a tap on the spike. It's unstable in the back. Vandal in her hands. Gonna go down to Soto, who's been so good at anchoring this A site so far. Cleaned up by the Exit players. The new player to Exit with a lot to prove. Coming in huge again with a site defense. We've talked a lot about the unknown names. The new player stepping up for DSG, but Exit has one of their own. And it's Soto, the top fragger for their squad on this defensive side to keep Exet in it. Really good work on this retake. Bunny D, consistent left. value out of that showstopper and Soto setup, really the star of the show, getting one off the tripwire and three more to make the retake happen. So four rounds away from overtime, our set. And this one, just an anti-eco. This should be an easy one for them to pick up from here on out. I mean, they, of course, exit. They are just full buying. They're keeping that operator in the hands of Bob's well, who's going to lock down the main. The flash rise caught without a weapon in hand. Unstable going to claim that first kill, recover the vandal as well to throw to a teammate. And all of a sudden, Exit in trouble on an anti-eco that they have to win to stay in the game around that they feel like they should win to keep this comeback going. Katarina, only a classic, and there's two players Set up shoulder to shoulder down in the vents from Exet, waiting to see if she'll dip her toes in and take the plunge. For now, though, the SG keep this one slow, holding space in mid. And Katarina attempts fate, nothing to come of it. Ultimate committed for Soto, and now everything known thanks to that neural theft is it'll be a last second pivot here for DSG. They're going to try and go quickly into this A site, but that is exactly where the Cypher push and excellence thus far is set up. Soto ready in the close corner, Bunny B on the other side, and they're slowing this one way down. Gravity well, Nade, all of these resources stalling out, and Soto knows all this left. camera. Looking onwards to two players up ramp, very aware of what Exet is going to do in this one. But are they just trying to pivot? Slowly walking back through. It would have to be a mad dash if they want to make this all the way back to the B site. The spike is going through spawn. 15 seconds. There's no way that spike will make it in time. There's absolutely no shot. 10 on the clock. Exet just have to count down the moments till they claim they're nine. Things got scary for a second. Misu just collecting a couple sheriff kills at the end. Ultimately, not going to matter. A lazy lion, perhaps going to carry this vandal over into the next round. Exit, not going to give an inch away at the end there. It was scary at the beginning. That opening found on the DSG side with that quick flash play, unstable, catching off rise completely. But Exit retaliate. Soto again, just so good on this defensive half, Mimi. Three rounds remaining between Exit and overtime. This is where yes. DSG, you might start to get the nerves. You realize your opportunities are starting to slip through your fingers. Six out of the last seven rounds, picked up by Exet, but DSG only needs one. No real big ultimates besides the Asteroid available for this one. So maybe a potential to build a strat around that. It does seem like they're interested in changing the pace, though. All five players leaning towards B. If they collect this orb for Hannah, they could have the Viper's Pit for the post plan as well. They tried to do this earlier, and it didn't work particularly well, but on the B site, it's honestly a bit easier. This wall cuts off so much of sight. If Hannah gets this orb, that pit will come down, and here's the execute, here's the wall. Unstable fighting. Way too aggressive, though, honestly. Very ambitious. That threw her life away. Four on five. Dangerous. A real opportunity for DSG with these ults, and it could be all fading. Exet. Trying to make the retake work. They go through one side of the wall. Bunny B up. Hannah could be caught off guard here inside of her pit. Bunny B is chasing, but a little bit overzealous as Hannah finds another. Her life intact, and the pit still up. Miso, though, spotted through the smoke by Katsumi. It's Cat and Bob. 
joined by the new addition Soto, trying to keep this game alive. That pit very soon to fall. Hannah has to stay committed inside of it for the moment. It's Bob is working her way slowly around. Back to back with the other Sky. They've wrapped by each other and Lazy Lion has gone through Katarina for one kill. That timer is ticking. Exit need to get on the spike promptly and they just can't do it. DSG. They may be a month old, but they've just taken down the third place squad from GC1 in dominant fashion. Two map wins in a row after losing on Pearl. What a moment for this squad. I mean, it seemed unlikely because it was unlikely. A team of three players who have never really competed at this level before, joined by Katarina, who's certainly proven herself, Hannah as well. But the expectations for those other three you don't even really know where to place them. And then Unstable, they were phenomenal on the entries and it just can't be understated how good Lazy Lion was on their way to monumentalize themselves as one of the top initiators potentially in the scene. Again, going up against Bob, who's always been recognized as one of the absolute best players in Game Changers. Stellar performance across the board and not just individually speaking, but Really, the teamwork, the level it was at, the synergy that we saw, you just don't expect to see that from a team that is a month old. And a lot of credit to Katarina, who's not only playing well individually, but IGLing this new team and making them look that way is just so impressive. It is an incredible moment here for DSG. And I'm just so excited to watch this run continue. They've taken a big name to begin Game Changers and who knows what the limit is for this team. Xset, of course, will be knocked down to that lower bracket, but that does do things for this series. And that run still yet to continue for DSG, but more yet to come up. We have an interview and the analyst standing by. Sierra? Thank you so much, you two. Wow, what a series. And hey, sometimes in this life, the, the more unlikely scenario is the one that ends up working out to DSG. This new team coming into Game Changers, this roster coming together, run they've managed to put together so far, Vans. This has just been incredible. Even on the day, going up against such decent teams like Exit, how long these players have been surrounded together has just been nothing short of amazing. It's made it all worth it for Toast to wake up early in the morning where he's at right now to do the watch party. I'm pretty sure all his fans in the watch party are having a blast in the chat right now. And even I can't believe it of how good, just as wide as mentioned, DSG looked like they've been playing for three game changers so far since 2021 or something. Like They, they looked like such a good unit and how they worked that defense was really good. I think it's a little bit unfortunate Unfortunately, on how Exit played the attack as well, very slow, very scared, not really figuring out like a good game plan, and not also really leveraging too much of that double controller that I mentioned that they could use a lot of these lurks. So when you're winning on these moments where you want to do late hits, there's just re-pivots in within the sight in itself from DSG that's been so good. The crosser has been perfect. The retakes, they've got like, what, seven retakes on the defense. So even the post plants. And then when it's like, okay, well, they're just brute forcing us down. Let's just hold it on a default again. DSG runs in and they get the kill on defense. <laughs> so to have that start, I think it was a 9-3 a half. It was a great mm -hmm. way to kick things off. And then you get to this point where maybe we get some sort of a comeback because x started looking really good on the attack. But again, the synergy, when you finally hit your money right and your ults, when you're leading by that much, you see the final result. It's really tough when you're down by that amount and you also lost the previous map to really kind of mentally reset. But they did start to get themselves back into the game. DSG had just done all of the legwork at that point, though, and it was just a matter of putting it across the finish line, and that's exactly what they do. Uh, you know, I was not expecting this at the start of the day, Vans. I really did not anticipate DSG coming nope. out with an upset. We, we already have another upset in the bracket as well, which we'll probably talk about in just a second. Mm -hmm. But that one's a little bit minor in comparison to this this is definitely one of the larger upsets probably the largest upset that one would anticipate coming into bracket play i agree because that's where you're looking at a roster of x set it's like okay well it's bob it's katsumi exactly it's c9 players it, it should be looking good bunny b's been bunny b sorry has been the one that's been sitting around from the x set roster that i know on Ray's satchels are really good. Then you had Soto had some amazing rounds as well on defense with the trap plays that actually had more value this time around on split versus what we saw on Pearl as the first map. 
But at the end of the day, it also comes down to the support cast that you have around Katarina uh, uh, as well. It's uh, Lazy Lion as that Sky. What well, they were at like 14 assists overall to allow players like Hana to even push out the way that she did, get clutches on the two versus one that you saw towards the A site. Like they definitely came out like guns blazing, and I think it's because they're probably playing at the guards' facility. Check them PCs; they're looking really good so far. <laughs> it's. The guards just have super amazing, awesome PCs. But no, actually, like, want to give the proper kudos to Disguise 2 for that. And especially, too, with that 2-1 victory over Exit, they'll be able to continue moving on in this upper bracket and knock Exit down into that lower bracket going on forward. So for Disguise, for this newer team coming into it, honestly, that is huge. They had... They came into this with so much to prove. And I mean, at this point, we're in the main event here, Bach. Next up, going up against FaZe. I mean, they're gonna be tested yet again, but I feel like as more and more this goes on with how these players are playing, I feel like these look a little a little less like upsets from here on out. If they can continue playing like that in the next game, it's definitely not gonna be, you know, too much of a crazy thing to say that they could win that one. I think that they just played exceptionally well. I would argue that, you know, Exet was a, a, a pretty difficult opponent to match up against in your first round to find a win there means promising things moving forward. And then if you looked at that bracket, you would have seen that Complexity actually found a win over Shopify Rebellion too, which was the other upset I was referring to, which maybe not as significant of an upset as this one, but the fact is we have two games coming in on the, the round of the quarterfinals, typically that's where we see the fewest upsets. Typically, I feel like the quarterfinals are always like, all right, 2-0, 2-0, get to the next round. And that's not the case this time around, fans. You guys are brushing over everything, too. There's, for me, three upsets in that bracket. I mean, yes, Shopify Rebellion or the second favorite, the one that's been sticking around for the core uh, as a main core, four players for the longest time. Uh, version 1 being a super team, yes, of course, but EG's and also another team that's been sticking around or that has stuck around for a very long time and that have been playing not only in these game changers but doing their own events uh with the complaint um uh, with the eg uh, event that they had and also just playing a lot in like the tier two open bracket uh, and, and whatnot just to get the practice through and they lost against face who they also only just started forming pretty much at the beginning of this year uh with mm. players that pivoted over from csgo to this and also revamping that roster as well and phase made it through so i think that we've had three great upstate games <laughs> we'll get a chance to dive a little bit more into that in a little bit of course we'll, we'll get to pivot series and really dive into these other teams making their runs but of course we want a chance to be sitting down with the victorious dsg so we're going to be getting hannah up for our interview enjoy your prime gaming post series highlights we'll be back in just a few no more.
in an absolutely fire series to be starting off our day. DSG get the upset over Xset to be moving on into our upper semifinals. And on the line for our Verizon post-match interview, we yet again have Hannah here to talk a little bit. First off, congrats, good stuff. You're in the upper semis. How are you feeling after taking down Xset? Such a close match, and I'm just glad we could close it out. <laughs> It was such a fire match too, and I know originally that we asked to talk to Katarina. She apparently has lost her voice, still not feeling well. How is she IGLing? How is the team in this condition? Uh, the team is just honestly, since Kat can't talk as much, we're definitely like all adding more effort into the comms. But Kat is also doing her best. Like she's still like full on calming. So shout out to Kat. Shout out to Kat. I cannot imagine how hard that must be right yeah. now. Especially, especially too, so much pressure going on into the upper semifinals. But now we get to see the new background. Everyone's out of the guard facility. So how has that been being able to be with the team for this main event? It's amazing. Like the energy in the room is absolutely insane. I got my coach Chris over here yelling like in between uh, games and stuff. Um, yeah, and the guard has just been amazing providing us with like so much equipment and everything. So, yeah. And we got to see with the match that DSG, I don't know, I felt like we all knew that everyone on the team is really talented, almost seemed like a different level today. Do you feel like actually all being together in person has really just kind of helped solidify things as a team? Because still coming into this DSG, you're such a fresh team coming into this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, just having my teammates next to me and being able to like fist bump or like look at each other and be like, yo, good round. Like it's definitely like we pump each other up and it's just a different environment when the team's together. I mean, keep doing what y'all are doing so far because it has been absolutely such a pleasure to Thank watch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to me as well. I'll let you go with the team because I know everyone's all together. I know we all <laughs> want to hang out before I let you go. If you have any final words for the chat. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you to all the DSG supporters and to our uh, boss, Toast, and who's watch parting our games right now. Um, we'll win out for you guys. And yeah, thank you for everything. Thank you, Hannah. Have a good rest of your day, okay? Thank you, you too. Thank you. As for us, we got a fire series to start things off. Now we're going to have a fire series to be ending off our day as we look to another matchup to keep on going between V. One and complexity. We're going to be taking a short break, but make sure to be back soon. What? What is this from Ye? He is currently unstoppable. True. He is just a consistent demon. El Diablo. Hey guys, it's Ye. Welcome to my course on Optimal Valorant Training. I'm going to be demonstrating now some angle clearing. I'll slowly come around the corner as well, making sure no one's on these off angles. 